Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Richard Jubiese. I'm going to take you through ICT. Information communication technology. So we start with what is a computer system? So I'll take you through very fast. Eh? This is because we will share with you the notes, the theory notes for the same. So we'll go through what is a computer system, classification of a computer system, definition of a computer hardware, block diagram showing elements of a computer system, input devices, output devices, storage devices, communication, processing, types of computer memories, selection and acquisition of computer hardware, and factors determining the processing power. Then we'll also look at computer software, that is types of software, computer booting, computer programming languages, factors to consider when selecting a software, preparatory versus open source software, selection and acquisition of a computer software, our setting, hardware and software, that is the hardware and software. Then number three, we'll go to computer file and database, computer file element, types of computer file, basic file, Designated storage, file organization method, file organization access method, data, database concept, database model, database management system, data processing modes, overview of application packages, that is Word, uh, spreadsheet presentation, and then computer, computerized accounting software, that is the QuickBooks, features and need of learning. Then number five, overview of information systems. That is the definition, why organization may introduce information systems, information management factors, types of decision, why organization require information systems, components of information systems, types of information systems, and then the role of information systems in an organization. Then number six, we look at data communication and computer network. That is one, introduction and concepts, data transmission modes, data communication media, digital and analog data communication, definition of computer network, the advantages and disadvantages of computer network. We'll also look at communication, network, hardware, and software, types of communication, networks, network topology, application of computer network. Then we look at internet, the introduction to internet, internet services, services providers, application of internet, internet and society, internal and external. Then we will also look at information system security. Then we will also look at threats to information systems. We will look at security of online data. Then number nine, emerging issues and trends. Computer fundamentals, introduction and, and all that. So that is basically what you're going to look at in our class of information communication technology. Thank you, and once again, my name is Joe B.S. Richard. And so what is a computer system? When we say what is a, com what is a computer system, before we look at computer system, let's, let us first define a computer. So a computer is defined as any electronic device that captures data, processes data, stores data, and gives us the output in form of information. In other words, a computer is an, any electronic, an electronic device that first of all it captures, then it processes, it stores, and then it gives out the output. It gives us the output. So data is defined as, so data is defined as raw facts. So data, what is data? Data is raw facts. Raw facts. Data is raw facts. Then what is processing? Processing is the act of changing raw data to get finished data. Processing is the act of changing raw data to get finished data. Then we also have 
input. Input is the act of feeding data into the computer. That is the input. Then we also have a device. A device is a gadget. Any gadget that is used or that is meant for any special function. Then the electronic is any data that any gadget that uses electricity. And then we also have storage is the ability to keep data for future use. Ability to store data for future use. So what else do we look at? Then the next thing we have is, just as we've said, eh, we have data. So we have data here. Then after we have the data, we input the data. So here, that's the input. After the input, we have the after the input, we have we have the processing. The processing is here. Processing. After the processing, we go to the output. Output. Then after the output, we can also say we have uh, the processed information. Processed information. Processed information. So, so this so that this is a computer system. So we have data. After data, we have the input, and then we have the process, and then we have processing. Then this output, then this is the processed information. So data, data can be anything. Let's say, for example, you are now reading this this book here. Once we read the book, we input. So which are the machines that we use to input? What are the gadgets? So whatever here we use to input, it can be mouse. We can also have keyboard. We can have flash disk. We can have a CD. What else can we have? We can have a microphone. So all this can be used to input data. Here. The next thing is processing. Processing here, we have what you call the CPU, the central processing unit. Then after that, we have the output. The output here is the monitor. Processing is the monitor. Monitor is what you use to, to get the product processing, the output. So once we have a machine, a whole machine system, we we have the data we input, and then we have the processing, and then we have the output. Then after that, after the output, the monitor gives us that. We can also have what we call the here processed information. We can have papers that have done what that have been printed. That's one. We can even we can also have we can also have apart from processing, there's a bit that we not put in. We also have what we call storage. We can also have storage here. So once it is post processed, it is stored. So we also have storage here. So storage can also be part of the backup. So I hope you understood. So we have the data, and then after that, we have the input. Then we go to processing, output, and then the processed information. Any question? Thank you. So the next thing we want to check the so after all this information we want to go to the generation of computers the generation of computers computer generations computer generation generation of computers so computer generation computer generation or history of computer let's use history of computer History of computer. History of computer. So we have the first generation. So there was the first generation. And 
we had the second generation Then we had the third generation Fourth generation, the fifth generation So we had the third, and then there's the fourth, and then there's the fifth so what are the characteristics of the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth generation? So the first generation, we had the, we, we, we were using what you call the vacuum tube in the first generation. The second generation, we had transistors, the third generation, circuits, then we had hard, then we had sorry, then we had microphones, and then the last, which is the fifth, it's what you call the AI, artificial intelligence. So the first generation, there was big as a loom. They were very slow in operating, they were expensive, they were broken, frequency, cumbersome to operate, and then they used punch cards. The second generation used minimum heat as compared to the first, because they had transistors. They did not break down frequently, they used punch cards, just like the, their counterparts. They were relatively fast in use. Then we went to the third generation. So that generation it was small in size, consumed less power, relatively fast in operation, easy to operate, they were small in size. Then we go to the fourth generation, smaller in size, consumed less power, operated fast, easy to operate, emits less heat, can multitask, the storage capacity was high. Then the last, the last generation, which is the fifth generation, highly portable, these are examples like laptops, you understand? Then they operate very fast, they are easy to use, can multitask, they are very high. Examples, eh? Examples of the last generation now. Uh, if you go back, eh, you'll realize that now we're actually having like Core i5, Core i6, Core i7, 6, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11 generation, Core i6. As we go back, you'll realize we have, then we also have SSD, we have SSD, we have HDD. So you'll just continue understanding. So then application of a computer. So, so where is the computer? Where is the computer played? Where do we apply computer? That is what is very important. Where do we apply computers? Where do we apply computers? Number one, communication. We apply Where do we apply? How do we apply to communication? Number one, there's email. Communicating from one person to the other. There's email. Email is transfer of electronic data. Is this? Number two, we also have electronic funds transfer. We can send the money. Number three, we have banking. No, banking is, is sending money. Sorry for that. Banking is sending money. Uh, we can transfer funds. That is in banking. You can check your statement. The next one is organizational. Organization management, that is planning, decision making, you can also use it in sales, getting reports, understanding what is happening in the organization. Then you also have science, there's research in science, research in science, we equally have what you call research. So you can use computers in doing research. Sorry, application of computers. Where is it applied? Where is it applied? It can be used in doing what? In doing research. The next one, we can, it can also be used in education, as we are doing now. Thank you. Education. Then we also have the last but not least, entertainment. You can decide to stream movies, you can decide to stream movies and just watch for fun and relax. So the next thing ladies and gentlemen is the advantages of computer. Advantages. Advantages and then we also have here disadvantages. Anything that has advantage must have a disadvantage. Number one, speed of work. Number two, Speed of work automation. Number three, you can communicate with someone who is miles and miles away. Number three, accuracy. Programs can make sure work is more accurate than if it is done manually. 
data storage it can store it can store large 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 information in a very small piece then natural resources it saves on saves of use of or use use of papers then it reduces workload so the speed then what else do we say we say communication Then we have accuracy. Then this data storage. Uh, among others. So what are the disadvantages? It causes addiction. This addiction. Somebody can wake up in the morning and the only thing they do, the only thing they do from morning to evening, addiction. Sorry. It can cause addiction Monday to Monday to Friday, morning to evening. The only thing they do is on their, their computers. They're either watching movies, they're either playing games. That's what they're doing. They're not doing anything else. It may cause breakdown. It may break down because sometimes they just they just shut down and they just mess you up. What will happen in that? You will you will lose a lot of data and a lot of information. That is huge loss. Number three. Uh, it also spread pornography. The guy is just the social ill cell. Another one is health issues. When you watch for long, you might get a problem with your eyes. Then the negative effects. Once, for example, computers are you're, you're done with, it's only called dumping, where you just throw them. And you know they they don't break down, they don't they don't disintegrate. Then it also it, it also it also leads to increased cyber cyber bullying or cyber attacks. It's called cybercrime. So there's cyberbullying where somebody just harasses you, and then there's also cyber attacks, and then there's also cyber crimes. This will also have hackers. So we checked on that was the history, then advantage and disadvantage of, of computers. So something else we want to check, ladies and gentlemen, is allow us just to, to, to use this corner to do something called allow us to do something called characteristics of computers characteristics 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 of computers so what are the characteristics of computers number one we talked about speed they are very fast they are fast they are fast so we call it speed it's called speed they are very fast Number two, they are reliable. Reliability. Number three, they are accurate. Number four, where are they accurate? Once you put information, you will get it. Not unless we have virus into your machine. We'll talk about that later. Mm, what else? They want to call this storage. Eh? The storage capacity is very high very high then they do not have any feelings they will work you give them a command that's it have no feelings you give them a command you give them a command they will do what they will they will take instructions yeah they take instructions they have no feelings there is no iq so they don't work as us no iq they're not like human beings that is who computers are Number something else, mm, there's also the talks, then there's also what you call versatility. Versatility. Versatility means eh, they can perform different tasks. You can open your machine, open many tabs, and search, in, search for so many things. You can search uh, why should I go to Justin College? You can search where is Justin College in the coaching in another tab. You can still search. What do I need to do to succeed or to pass my classmate exams at just on college? It will perform the tasks. Then the next thing we also want to, I want us to go back here. Yeah? Well, we talked about the computer system. In the computer system, we had draw data, then we had input, we had storage, uh, storage also had processing. After processing, we also had something called, we also had something called output. So I want us to start with, I want us to start with, I want us to start with the CPU. 
I want us to go to the CPU. So what is the what is the CPU? We've said CPU is the central processing unit. What is in the CPU? In the CPU, in the CPU we have RAM. Because that is where all processing takes place. In the CPU we have what you call RAM. All in the CPU. And so what is the RAM? Random RAM is the random access memory. RAM is random access memory. RAM is the random access memory. That is in the CPU. In the CPU, we also have ROM. ROM is the read-only memory. Read-only memory. So the CPU has it has a RAM, random access memory, and then it has a ROM. It also holds the processor. Then it also has the what you call the control unit. So the CPU, ladies and gentlemen, which is the central processing unit, has a RAM. We also have the ROM. So RAM is the processing. And then we have the ROM. RAM is the processing, ROM is the storage, the main storage. And then we have RAM, we have ROM, what else do we have? Oh, sorry, we have the control unit, the motherboard. So RAM can be 1 GB. We also have 2 GB. We have 4 GB. We have we, we can actually extend, we can actually expand our GB, but we have 1 GB, 2 GB, or 4 GB, we have 8 GB, we, we even have 16 GB. ROM, ROM are 2. We have 1 for, we have SSD, SSD, we have 128, 5, 128, 256, and then we have 516, and then I think we have 128. For the HDB, we have, this I think 250 GB, and then we have 500 GB. We don't also have one test of it. And then the control unit is the, is the motherboard. So, next we go to classification of computers. Classification of computers. Classification of computers. Classification of computers. Ladies and gentlemen, I have told you before, we will share these notes. We are sharing with you all these notes. You will get the notes. So, how do we classify compute computers? So, there's classification by purpose. Number one, purpose. Classification by by purpose. Purpose is why do you need this computer? What is it for? What is its role? You might have a computer for the class. You might have a computer because maybe you are a DJ. So the specs of a computer of the class and the one with the DJ are very different. You might be having one for doing recording and, and editing. The RAM in the, the RAM the RAM will vary. So with the purpose. Why do you need it? Number two, there's also generation. Classification by generation. We talked about generation from one to eight. There are those who are using Pentium and then there are those who are using now Core i to do. Or there are those who are using Core i. Then no, there are those who are doing Core to do. But then we have also have Core i5. Then next we also have speed. This is speed. There are those who are looking at the processor. How is the processor? Then next we have the processing power. And then the size. Processing power. Processing power. And then size. Size matters a lot. Somebody wants something that is very light. Somebody wants something that is very big. So I think the lighter it is, the more specs it has, the more expensive it is. Then we can say we can also classify them by, by the cost. Is this cost is also a very important and a major, major, major stuff. So next we go to backup. So secondary storage devices. So memory is the oh, okay. So we had said CPU, we have this and this. Eh? So we have we have memory. So we are talking, we will talk about memory. Memory, yes. Now we will run we, so we'll talk about RAM and then we'll also talk about the ROM. We have said before RAM is the random access memory, ROM is the read-only memory. Uh, so what else do you want to understand about RAM? RAM can be 2 GB, it can be 2, it can be 4, it can be 8, it can be 16, 
ROM can be 250 GB, all this is in GB, can be 500 GB, can be 1 terabyte. ROM. This one is temporary, this is permanent. When the machine goes off, you get this data. When the machine is on, goes off, you won't get the data in ROM. Because it's just random access, random access, random access. So that is the backup, so memory is divided into two, that is the memory. Next, we're going to discuss about, so we have primary and then we also have secondary memory. The secondary memory, or advanced memory, we are going to discuss optical disk, magnetic disk, and then magnetic tapes. Optical disks, these are like the CD. You, you know what CDs are? Uh, DVDs. Yeah, but you see, so we are, what is happening is we are actually, we are actually facing them out. So we have optical, then we have magnetic, then we also have what we call, uh, no magnetic, we have, we have discs, and then we have tapes. But what I'll tell you is most of these things, we actually, what we are doing now, we are actually facing them off. Like now you don't use CDs, just use flash disks. So, but so we also have flash disks. Eh? We also have flash disks because we'll discuss them later. So why are these? So they are cheap, they are portable, then they can store large. The disadvantage is they break down easily. They can easily lose information and requires a specific reader, special reader for it to be read or written. Magnetic disks. Uh, so this is what we have the flash disks. Sorry, this is what we have the flash disks. So, so why we have so what are the advantages of flash disks? What are the advantages? They're so high. So here you can get somebody having around 215 MB, 215 MB, and then 1 GB, but nowadays we rarely see these ones for 1 GB. Uh, we go to 2 GB, and then the 16 GB. And then we have touch 2 GB. No, we also have 64 GB, guys. Eh? It's, it's, it's no joke, it's no joke, guys. Eh? We also have 64 GB. We also have 64 GB. Mm, so that's why we say the high, high storage capacity, they are high, easy, highly portable, they are easy to read, then they are highly reliable. But of course, once they have the virus, then that's it. Yeah, they are easily attacked by virus. You can easily reduce data, then some are very expensive. Then we also have what we call the magnetic tapes. These ones are also, we, now it's really seeing the magnetic tapes. Eh? These are those that we use them for videos. You remember the old guys, eh? people who were born in our age, when we used to take Mazua and Yai. So, of course, they were easy to use. They were some who were, were highly, high, had high storage capacity, then they were very reliable. They are very slow in operation, they require special reader, they only use specific, they only use for specific purposes. So then we have communication devices. So what is what what are communication devices? What are communication devices? What are communication devices? Communication devices. So communication devices. What are communication devices? So what is communication devices? So communication devices are, are gadgets that, that are used to pass information from one end to the other. So these are devices, these are gadgets that are used. So here we have communication mode. So the mode is the media. And then we also have the means and we have the media. So in the mode, communication modes, eh? in the mode, in the mode, we have the mode is being passed in the form. Mode is the form, is the form. This is the form. It's the form in which the information is passed. So here, there's what we call simplex. Simplex is one direction. So we have A simplex. One direction. Simplex one direction. A, that's it. Understand that's it. Half duplex is where half duplex. 
half duplex half duplex is where half duplex is where uh, communication between A and B, but at a time, each telephone. Then full duplex. Uh, this way, communication is passed from one point to another simultaneously and at the same time. Full duplex. Then communication media. These are the communication outlets or tools used to store and deliver information or data. That's the communication media. And then we also have the communication means. Means is the channel. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope we are good at that juncture. We are okay. We are very much okay. So we have discussed what is what is a computer system. We have also discussed what is what what as what okay, we discuss about computer systems, we discuss about data, we discussed about about the input, output, we have also discussed about we have discussed input, we discussed output, we discussed about the processing. So next we want to go to something called computer software. That's chapter two. Computer software. So computer software. So what, when we talk about computer software, what comes into your mind when we talk about computer software? So software are instructions. Software is a set of instructions. So that's why when you say word, we have instructions that are what words word in typing and writing. Then we have Excel that goes towards instructions that are geared towards calculations. And then we have presentations. So communication, not computer, software, set of instructions that governs the computer operation. Set of instructions, set of instructions that govern a computer system. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to remind you that no, sorry, computer operation, computer operation. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to remind you that we will still share the notes with you. All of you will get the notes. Then we also have what we call, uh, so, then, so the data, data against information, so we also have, okay, so that is it. So in, in software, we have system and application. We have what we call system, and then we also have what you call application. So we have system software and application software. Before we say, so examples of system software is the OS. Examples of, of the application software are like Microsoft Office, which has Microsoft, 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 Microsoft Word, is it? Microsoft Word. That's an example. So these ones are needed. The system is must be in a machine for the machine to operate. This one is not a must. This one will depend with what you want the machine to do. So these ones will be used for running of the day-to-day -day activities. That one will be used for the for the for the operation. Next, so in the system software, the system software. It is divided into three system software. So we have operating system, we have you know, we have operating system, we have utility software, and then we have language translators. So we have operating operating system, then we also have language, and then you have utilities. So we have utilities 
and then we have language. This one here for applications. Not really. So next. So this is so the operating system, this one as we said here earlier, it is in charge or it is in charge of all the activities of the machine. Without this, all these must be put on top of this. So without this, this is the infrastructure that allows the machine to operate. Then we have utility software. Then these are software that come to solve a specific problem, e.g. antivirus. That's a utility software. Antivirus. Antivirus. Then language translators. Then these are software that are capable, have the capability to change information from one language to another. So what do we do? So let us try and end up a graphical representation of this. We need to have, we need to have a, a chart. Is it a chart or we have? Somebody once told me that anytime you have what you call pictures, pictures rarely get out of somebody's face or somebody's mind. So what we say these softwares, go here we will start with softwares. Software. After that, we have what we call here we have what we call system. System software. And then here we have what you call application software. Under system software, we have what we call we say operating operating system. No, let me write it here. Operating system. Then we have after operating system, we have utility softwares. Utility softwares, and then number three, we have the language. What is the spelling of language? Language. Language. Language software. And then application software, we have the apps. They include Office. Here we have Word, we have MS Word, Microsoft Word, we have Presentation, we have Excel, etc. So what is the next thing we want to discuss? Uh, application software, here, they are divided into two, there is ready-made and then there is still made Oh, I forgot about that. There's ready made and then there's still language. So this is ready made. This is ready made. This is ready made. So what we we'll do, we we'll just put it here, here. So here we just say ready made. Ready. Ready made. And then we have tailor made. Examples of tailor made are like what we call, what we call. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Let's say, for example, we go to a supermarket. You get somebody has a system of 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 calculating their their stock. That's a tailor-made software. Uh, another example of tailor-made software are QuickBooks. Those are tailor-made softwares. QuickBooks. Oh no 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 no! Not QuickBooks. Uh, examples are. Let's say, for example, you go to some, a place like UN. They have a system where they control their entry and their exit and how people come in and people log out. That is the tailor and software. So next we have, what else? Next we come to the operating system. So types of operating system. We have network operating system, we have multitasking, we have single, and then we have distributed operating system. So we have network. So we have network. After network, we have what we call multitasking. We have multitasking. Then we have single tasking. Operating system. Those are types. Then examples of distributed. We have we can have one at just on here on campus. Then single user. 
is like the Android one for single users. And then multitasking, we can now have one, no, no, sorry, for distributed, we can now have like one for case, not one for case, how's it called? Case center, yes. Examples of, so what are the examples? We have Windows, we have Android, we have Linux, we have Macbook, and the rest. Then we also have language softwares. We have high language, we have low language, we have English. We also have machine language, programming language, binary code language. So what are the functions of operating systems? Functions of operating systems. Functions, allow me to erase this, ladies and gentlemen. I know you have already taken what you wanted. So we go to functions. What are the functions of operating systems? What are the functions? Check it your brains and tell us what the functions of operating systems are. The functional operating systems, number one, to schedule work, jobs, number two, workload accountability, to log in, error reporting. So number one, to start machines, to give work. Number two, accountability. Number three, logging in and logging out. Then we also go to advantages of utility software. We say utility software, these are software that are designed for specific problems. Specific problems. So that's the advantage. Number two, they're very efficient and then they're accurate. They're reliable. Number three, they're limited because they only, they only solve a specific problem. They don't solve the, the other problem. Then they cannot multitask, they occupy a lot of space. I gave an example of QuickBooks. So language translators, these are software that are able to convert, interpret any, form, any language from one form to another. We say that languages one and zero, one and zero, one and zero. That is how language talks. So we have examples of English like statements, binary language, low level machine. Advantage it makes communication easier, it, it also solves communication languages. Then we can also discuss what we call types of language translators. So we have the interpreters, we have the compilers, and then we have the assemblers. Then we go to application software. So these are these are used, these are set of instructions that are used to solve our day-to-day -day activities. We said we have ready-made and then we have tailor-made. Tailor-made, ready bespoke, proprietary, and customized. Advantage also ready-made. What are the advantages of ready-made? Number one, they are readily available. Number two, they are easily accessible. Number three, they are easy to use. Then time saving, they are cheap, they are portable, and they are error free. What are disadvantages of the application software? They can solve general problems, they can't solve, they are common, they are easy to duplicate. Yeah, if you have your own, your own software, somebody can just wake up in the morning and, and work on it. That is for the ready made. The tailor made, they solve specific needs, and then they are unique. Disadvantages, they are very expensive, they are time consuming, they might not be accurate, they are used by specific people. Let's say, for example, you are doing something like, uh, just as I said before, uh, QuickBooks. You must have understood it, otherwise, you can't do it. The next thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to discuss network. Network, network, network. I want us to discuss network. So, what is network? What is network? What is network? E network. E is usually for a connection. It's usually for a network. When someone tells you they have a network, e, this guy has networks. What is that network? Network is connection. So computer network is the art of interconnection of computers in order to share resources. When you have networks, so when you have a problem, guys will help you. When you need some jobs, maybe somebody will, will, will fix you somewhere. So, so what are the network devices? Network devices. So we have a computer here. What else do we have? We have a router, router. We have the client. We have cables. We have server. What else do we have? I'm trying to look at everything that gives us. So we also have a switch. So we have a computer, there's a router, then there's a client. 
So communication media, then we have the media, which are the cable. Cables are medium. The media that we use, then we have a router. This one helps to direct the traffic. Then we have a switch. It helps to, to expand. Then we also have a, we have a hub. So what is the, so we have types of server. There's application server, there's a print server, and then there's the database server, inter, internet server, and then there's a proxy server. Types of network. There's the LAN, there's MAN, and there's WAN. LAN is the local area network. This is a private one for organizations. And then there's MAN, metropolitan area network, so it's bigger, like not a very small or big organization. And then there's one wide area network, this for international networks. Advantages of LAN, they share resources in a large area. It is cheap, it saves on space, it's easy to implement and easy to back up. Disadvantages is when the central node is affected, the whole system goes down. It requires expertise to implement, it operates on a small geographical area, it is easy to spread viruses. Man, it is economical, it is cheap to manage. But again, they share the same problems. One, it is fast, economical, unlimited storage, but again, the same problem. Then we have what we call network topology. What is topology? So we have rings, then we have start topology, this shoot. So this only, this only means how have you put your machines? How have you, how have you networked your machines? How have you networked your machines? Topology is about networking machines. This is the main machine, and then we have another machine, and then we have another machine here. So how have you, how have you, man, how, how have you put your machines? Eh? How have you networked them? So topology basically is about how you have put your machines. Uh, so we have three roots topology, we have mesh topology, we have bus topology, we have hybrid topology. So what are the advantages? They are able to save on resources, they are easy to implement, it is economical. What is the advantage of networking? As we said it, they share resources. They are, they manage, you can manage costs, you can the workload, you can also manage workload. It is easy to manage. Uh, so advantages of rain, of course, the advantages are more or less the same. All of them are economical, they share resources. They are fast, that is it. So the next thing, ladies and gentlemen, we want to discuss is, is we want to remember, we want to remind ourselves, eh? um, components of a computer system. So what are components of a computer system? So let, let us do a brief, brief, we want to do brief, brief revision of our two chapters, chapter one and chapter two to understand chapter one and chapter two, revision for chapter one and chapter two. So we have chapter one and chapter two. It's called revision, sorry. Chapter one and chapter two, you know when you write with this hand to the left, this hand is funny, 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 funny. So we do revision, revisions for one end, chapter one and chapter two. We'll go very fast to the revisions. So what is the computer? This electronic device that captures, processes, stores, and gives the output of data. The peripheral services devices are the gadgets that are used to control, no, that is connected to the central processing unit. So what are data? Data are raw facts. Information is processed data. Information is processed data. Network is interconnection of computers. Generation of computers. Number one, we had the vacuum tubes, that's the first generation. Then after that, we had transistors, that is the second. Then integrated circuits, and then microprocessors, and then artificial intelligence. What is the advantage of internet? What are the advantages of internet? Sharing of information, communication. Doing research, employment, advertisement, improving working hours. You can also do what you call, yeah, we have research. You can also save your things online. You can make money, you can earn. So we discuss so we discuss secondary storage devices. What are they? We have the optical discs, these are the CDs, DVDs, and ROM. We have the magnetic discs, which these are the flash disk and hard disk and memory cards. And then we also have the magnetic tapes, which are the cassettes. Then operating systems available in the industry today, which are they? We have single use, like the Android. We have operating systems like the Windows. We have network operating systems like Linux. So what are the key features of what? What are the key features of what? We have main match. We have header and footer. 
we have watermark subscript auto correct we have align alignment there's the left there's the right and there's the central alignment and then we also have additional to verify then what is software software we say is a set of instructions software is a set of instructions remember software set of instructions that govern a computer operation so they are divided into two we said application software and system software application software we have tailor-made and ready system software we have operating systems utility and language translators principal functions of operating systems what are the work number one input and output control number two logging in number three error reporting accountability workload and scheduling jobs so what are the examples of computer packages available today computer packages available today what are the examples number one of computer packages available today we have word ms word we have excel we have what what else we have we have presentation so to learn the packages well, why should we learn the packages to generate cash flows to get accurate reports to get backup data to be fast in operation to have better management of money so uh, computerized to manual systems computerized to manual systems why what is the advantage of computerized to manual it saves time it secures information for, we also have we can also use it for feature reference we can uh, it is easy to adapt to a new system then something else is advantage of ict it's reliable it improves banking or security it gives us employment communication becomes ease of communication we have stores transactions next we want to discuss something called cloud computing what is cloud computing what is cloud computing in cloud computing you are able to access your data or your information 24 7 or 24 hours so what do you need for, why do we, what do we need for cloud computing we need infrastructure that is a platform then we need the software and then the network types of cloud computing we have private this one uh, this one can be set privately with the password and it is only yours we have public this is data that is in the cloud that is not limited to anyone anybody can get it then you have hybrid this is combination of the two of the private and the public so what is the advantage you can get it anytime number three unlimited space number four some of them are very cheap number five they cannot be stolen uh, number six another advantage of 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 cloud computing is it is not limited to where you can access it from you can even go to the us and access it from there you can, you can go to the africa and access it from there uh, then, what, then next there's what we call uh, let me allow us to discuss something we want to look at two questions in presentation this is may 2013 casnev question one define the term primary storage in the context of computing primary storage so we had secondary and primary Secondary, we talked about, you remember, we talked about something in secondary. We talked about something in secondary. We talked about optical, magnetic tapes, and magnetic disks. That was secondary. So, therefore, in primary, is what we discussed the CPU here, the storage here. That is the hard, hard, hardware that forms the main memory. Then, describe the following e commerce terms business to business. This is transaction between a business to another business, like a manufacturer to a wholesaler, or a wholesaler to a manufacturer, period. Then customer to customer. This involves this involves the end users. Let's say for example an online auction. Uh, I like four social economic challenges brought about by the rapid advancement in the internet today. There's moral degradation, degradation, there's unemployment, there's data insecurity, there's cost. What 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 else has brought about uh, there is we have we have we've talked about moral degradation. We've talked about health. This health, this problem of health, people want to stay with their eyes watching movies and they're not feeling well. Uh, something else is the practice of telecommunication has ensured that there exists a thin line between work, family, and leisure. In relation to the above statement, evaluate the merits and demerits of telecommunication. We discussed about that. Uh, we will, all these questions and answers will be now blocked with this. So, once we are through with our syllabus, we will go through them.
So allow us to go to the next topic so that we don't waste a lot of time doing one thing and yet we have several things that we should be doing, isn't it? Anyway, for now, ladies and gentlemen, allow us to, to do two things and that is say thank you for now. But before that, allow us to differentiate between the RAM and the, and the ROM. So ROM is in the hard disk, where we say the memory is high. The RAM is in the CPU. Of course, they share the same house. So the ROM is used to hold programs and data during processing. The ROM is non-volatile. The RAM is a primary memory device. It goes first to the RAM and then goes to the ROM. The ROM is the secondary. The RAM is small in capacity, the ROM is large. The RAM is temporary, the RAM is temporary, the ROM is, is permanent. When you put your machine off the RAM, you won't, you won't access the RAM, but you'll access what is in the ROM. As an accounting student, why is it important to learn computer theory? Why do you think you are in this class to learn computer theory? A computer operates at a high speed than other data processing tools. Number two, it is consistently accurate and the degree of accuracy depends on its design. Number three, a computer is free and it can consistently be used for long hours. So it is versatile in that it can perform any task it has been programmed to perform. A computer can store data in a, in a compact way and hence saves, save on storage space. Something else you need for a computer. You can walk around with your computer. The computer does not forget. Not unless it has some virus where it crashes. But a computer does not forget. And whatever you feed in a computer, that's what you get out. So what is a computer? A device that, what is a computer? A computer is a peripheral device that is not essential over, is, is, is a computer is, what is a computer? Computer is a device that stores, no, inputs, stores, processes, no, inputs, processes, stores, and outputs data or information. Gets, gets in raw data and then gets out information. Data are raw facts, information are, processed data. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. That has been our our chapter one and chapter two of ICT. Thank you and God bless you.